Hi everybody! As you can tell, we're not in a workshop today, but I have something really cool and exciting and I want to show it, so let's have a closer look. So what do we have here? Uh, an old guitar case, obviously, but what's so special about it? Before I open it, I want to quickly tell a story. I was lucky enough to get this case and its contents, of course, from the daughter of the original owner, who sadly passed away. It was used by a professional musician in former East Germany, so German Democratic Republic, up until I think the 80s, if I'm informed correctly. And then, imagine, like after having played the last show or whatever, it was put back in this case and pretty much not touched since. For almost 40 years set in a closet somewhere. This is as close to a time capsule as you can get. So if you're curious about what it was like to be a professional musician and to play electric guitar in Eastern Germany, this is pretty much the thing to look at. Without further ado, let's open it. Oh, yeah. This is a Musima. Musima was the most famous and the biggest maker of instruments back then. And this model is called an Eterna or Eterna Deluxe. And it was part of a series of instruments called the Electrina series. In this period we're talking about here, which is roughly 1963, 64, maybe to 73, so let's say late 60s, early 70s, there were three main models of the Electrina guitars being like the center main model called the Algita, having two pickups and a vibrato system. Then there was the very rare single pickup version called the 1-2 or 1-2, whatever, weird name. <laughs> and on the other hand side of the Algita was the Eterna Deluxe. Like, as you can tell by the many knobs on there and the three pickups, the top of the line model. So this Thing would have been quite expensive back then and likely not the instrument you would see on like in the hands of the average home player making noise in the basement. This is something you would have been able to afford when making music was your living. Okay, so let's take it out of the case and check out what else we have going on here. Oh, so right off the bat original leather strap on there, which is pretty cool. But we'll put the guitar away for now. So what's going on here? Coily cable. I recognize the shape of these plugs. So these are original East German plugs. You don't see coily cables from there very often. Usually it's just like a very thin light gray colored cable. That's pretty cool. Vibrato arm. Those are often missing so it's nice to have it and in perfect condition as well. I mean I wouldn't expect anything else from this pair of old string. <laughs> and in front here those appear to be all old guitar strings. I don't know, we might have to dig through and see what we have here. Let's see what's going on. Plectrum guitar, a fifth. Flachdraht, of course, it's all gonna be in German, so sorry for that. But if we turn it around, saying like the e EVP, that's like this, um, the state mandated uh, retail price for this, being three marks <laughs> and having a number. So yeah, we can say for sure this is East German as well. There are different makes by the looks of it. We got some domino ones. We got a bunch of these mono tags. Solo, super sound. 
But I mean, look at the cool logo. I really dig that. That would look cool on a t-shirt. He's German as well here, made in German Democratic Republic. And if we just dig through here, there's a ton of those. I mean, they're still sealed, right? These strings. Look at that. And by the looks of it, it's a flat wound string. So what you would expect on a jazz guitar. Oh, one has been ripped open. Not sure, but I think we can <laughs> string up the instrument in all vintage. Oh, look how many. That's like complete sets and even more. What's going on here? That's a different one. Oh, that's Tomastic. That's um, a West Western brand. I don't think those were available back then here, made in Austria. Maybe somebody had some relatives <laughs> across the border and they were able to send in some Western strings or whatever. That's interesting. And even more strings. Look, I mean, it doesn't end. I'm curious if there's anything else under there. Those are used ones. I mean, I guess they would keep it in case something breaks. I don't know. Let's look below here. Okay, I think that's it so far. We just have a ton of guitar strings, <laughs> both used and non-used. For whatever that's worth. Maybe that's more something for display than actual use. I don't know, but at least looking at the old logos is cool. And I should take some measurement of what kind of gauges they actually played back then. That would be interesting as well. For now, let's put this away and take a closer look at the guitar, shall we? the vibrato arm here should just slide in and it does nice you should be able to adjust the tension whatever you know I always love a guitar with a ton of little knobs and switches so what does these uh, what do these do I looked at a schematic before and those up here that's pretty simple they are just little on off toggles for each of the pickups if we look below, that's where it gets more interesting. There's a switch up here in front, labeled M and R, stands for melody and rhythm, or in German, Melodie und Rhythmus, of course. Then, if you have it to melody, this set of volume and tone control will be active. But if you switch it over to rhythm, there's a second set, way in the back here, labeled R. And this is again your volume and tone. So you can have a preset dialed in and switch back and forth. So that might be useful. Then there is a last little toggle switch here, M and B. If it is an M, it does exactly what I just uh, explained. But if you switch it over to B, it will be, I believe, just the bridge pickup, but we have to verify that in what they call banjo mode. Banjo mode is like um, you filter off all the bass, just a high pass filter. And you have an extra volume for that for your banjo mode. <laughs> Finally, there's this little damper control thing on the bridge here, which you can just flip up. Fortunately, it looks like the foam is completely deteriorated. That won't do much other than crumble nasty stuff. <laughs> and a pretty nice vibrato system. So actually works. I think I've found a little modification. If you see this hole back here, that's where the output jack would have been. One of those plastic types, I guess, that always crumble away. And now it's up here, so who knows? Maybe the old one broke and the owner put it here for convenience? I don't think they would have been here originally. Next thing you can see, some of the old pickguard screws are actually like and moving inwards this one as well this one is extreme and I believe that's due to the plastic sort of shrinking it's contracting inwards and pulling the little screws with it so yeah that's a known issue but other than that the guard looks pretty okay I think 
Ah, uh, hold on up here. There's a little break in going on. There's one screw missing. That's curious. There's not even a hole below that. Maybe the factory didn't put it in. And this little screw looks a bit out of place. I'm not sure if this is actually original. I need to look at some reference photos. This might have been just something rattling and the owner putting in screw there <laughs> to stop it from rattling. These three pickups, like the Cimedo type, they are famous for sounding great, so I have high expectations. <laughs> if we look at the fretboard, the wood is nice and dark and looks pretty great. I mean, whatever this is, is this actually ebony? I don't know. Cool little inlays. And actually a very modern tall thread wire size, so this should be well usable. I love the little celluloid binding here. It's all in pretty good shape. And if we check up here where we expect the most wear and tear, I mean, that's not too bad. You can see somewhere, and even in the fretboard up here, some divots. But that, I'd say this doesn't even need a refret. I think some fret crowning and polishing should do the trick. Look at the owner's old plectrum. Had some, what's that, like cork glued on there for extra, extra grip. Oh, that's interesting. Flat wound strings. The laminated nut you would expect from like black, white, black kind of plastic. Truss rod cover is a little bent up. Oh, the string caught under there by the looks of it. That's why it's bent. Okay, we have to take care when we tune it. Other than that, more celluloid binding, which you wouldn't have on the uh, lower models. The tuners look in great shape. And finally, of course, the logo plate here, yeah, made from the same material as the scratch plate. You turn out the lux. I think there's nothing left to do but to try and plug it in and see if it does anything, just with these old strings here. All right, moment of truth, using the old cable, of course. Crank up the amp a little bit. And see what we have. So let's go for melody mode this thing on rhythm, so those controls should be active. Nothing at all. And that's the bridge pickup. Tone control. It's, notice it's reverse, so this is tone off. This tone off, whatever. So, next pickup, middle pickup. Works. Oh, that's great. And third one. Hey, we have three working pickups. Let's tune it and try, and try to play it. <laughs> okay, bridge pickup on. action um, these old rusty strings are weird I mean given their flat wound strings you would expect them on a the more jazz guitar but who knows maybe this was a jazz guitar back then we don't know what kind of music they played with it you get this very dull and warm sound should help. Aggressive 
actually a bass cut going on here. Since this sounds super dull, let's try a little overdrive. five millimeters at the 12th fret. Old rusty strings, terrible intonation. So I guess the last thing to test is the vibrato system here. systems. The damper, of course, does nothing. Because the foam is gone. I mean, what's the conclusion here? Yeah, that's hardly a demo <laughs> when you can't really play the guitar. Um, if this is what they actually played back then, and if this is actually the setup they used, I mean the neck is relatively straight. Of course you would first assume, oh wow, it bowed over time, but this is a straight neck, it's just a terrible setup. So hats off to the guys playing this every day. This uh, really leads into the conversation about modern guitar setup and what kind of expectations we have. I think modern guitars, the way we set them up now, play way better than they ever have in the past. Honestly. All the knowledge on how to really get the most out of the guitar, how to set it up perfectly, this was not really available back then. I assume there were no, not really any guitar tags you could bring your instrument to. It was all do it yourself something broke, you had to solder or repair it yourself, like this uh, output jack for example here. In my opinion, this is a great instrument, just by what it is and what it has, and you know I love East German stuff, of course. It needs a setup, it needs a fresh set of strings, I don't really get why they put flat ones on everything back then, at least like in accordance to modern musical tastes, it's a little bit tough to, to wrap my head around. Maybe just because I'm not used to it, I'm not a jazz guy at all. <laughs> um, I think this video is just part one. There will be um, a second part where I take this guitar apart, clean it, 
I don't want to say restore it, I want basically just make it playable again and do the necessary things to make sure it lasts the next 50 years. And then will be time to play a real demo. <laughs> yeah, it's not a guitar anybody needs, but definitely a museum piece. Thanks for watching and I hope I catch you again in the next one. Bye. Hold on, I got a little bonus for you. So I happened to find some old catalogs. This one should be late 60s, I believe, with a bunch of interesting guitars, but that's for another time. Here's why what we're here for, the Eterna Deluxe. And most importantly, we have some prices finally. So here's the El Gito, we talked about that one. 370 marks, 360 for this one, 440 for the big three pickup Migma thing here. And the Eterna finally, 660 marks and 85 pfennig. That was expensive, damn. <laughs> And considering cover, like the case, would have been 33 marks on top of that. I happen to find some data here for like the mean uh, income over the decades in the GDR. And if we look like 1965, it would have been just 630 marks. And in the 70s, it went to 750. So the guitar alone was uh, average earnings and that's before taxes or whatever i'm not sure how that worked back then but considering you would have to pay your rent and have something to eat so uh, yeah this person really shelled out some serious cash here <laughs> the next thing that's pretty interesting if we go down to um zubehör like um equipment or extras or like accessories we can see um leather strap 4 mark 50 he bought that he could have had like segeltuchhülle which is like canvas gig bag would be the cheaper option uh, strings for um yeah here the, this one strings for electrina guitar chrome flachdraht uh, flat wound yeah they only sold you flat wound strings for 3 mark 50 per pack and plectrums or guitar picks celluloid schildplatt which might have been like real tortoise shell not sure maybe it was still a thing back then to have a real tortoise shell and what i think is really interesting celluloid mit a uh, cork griff auflage or um, like a finger hold made from cork so the yellow funny plectrum which i thought was homemade no you could actually buy those i've never seen any other before and you would have paid two mark 55 per per dozen <laughs> Anyways, hope you find that interesting. Catch you next time. Bye.